What's up guys, Mikkel here, and a lot of people are coming out and saying that the recent pump in the cryptocurrency market should be sold and we are going to make new lows. As in this video, I want to talk about whether or not you should be trading this pump, but I am looking for to know whether this rally is sustainable, because guys, there is actually a massive event coming up on the macro that will likely determine the future direction of the cryptocurrency market. Guys, in this video, we're going to talk about that, and at the end of this video, I want to show you a brand new clip of Stuart Alderati, who is the head of Ripple's legal counsel, talking about what he thinks 2023 is going to bring. Guys, make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see that. You are not going to want to miss it. Like always, guys, your support means so much to this channel. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below and turn on bell notifications. These three simple things go such a long way in helping this channel grow, and it really does mean so much to me. If you guys ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange, Uphold, down in the description of this video. Guys, Uphold has been blowing it out of the water recently, and if you do not have an account there yet, I highly suggest you sign up using the link in the description of this video. With that said though, guys, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, let's jump right into the video, and we're having another pretty good day in the cryptocurrency market. Prices are holding pretty stable, but like I said the other day, we were just looking to make sure that we didn't get any negative price action based off the new news that the SEC is going after Genesis and Gemini trading. So guys, it looks like the crypto market is just not reacting to that at all, and it looks like we're just hanging out in no man's land. Guys, as we can see, we are below this massive resistance on the XRP price chart. We have been below this thing for almost two years now, and we really need to get a convincing break to the upside side in order to get this thing out of the way. Now guys, below us, we have a very strong support as well, and this thing is almost three years old at this point. You can go all the way back, and you can see the XRP price chart bounces off this line a ton. And guys, the price is just really getting squeezed to this final point right here, and I really am expecting a massive moment of volatility in the near future. Typically, when XRP breaks through one of these big resistances or breaks through one of these big supports, there's typically a lot of volatility that ensues. So guys, we're just waiting for that moment to come into the market. Now guys, a lot of people are expecting that XRP's volatile moment will coincide with an ending of the Ripple SEC case. Based on the current timeframes, based on looking at this chart, I certainly do think that's possible. And I really do think that could be the event that gives us enough momentum to break to the upside. Now guys, with that said, there is a pretty big thing happening on the macro that is going to be critical in determining whether or not XRP or any cryptocurrency can really sustain its current gains. And that has to do with the traditional markets. Guys, the traditional markets, and specifically we're looking at the S&P right here, is below this pretty big resistance. In order for crypto markets to take back off, we need to be sure that the S&P has bottomed as well. Guys, if equities are still going down, there is just no way crypto is going to be able to take back off. We really need relief from the traditional markets, and as we can see based on this chart, we are getting very close to a do or die moment. We should be praying that the S&P is able to break above this resistance because guys, this would likely be very bullish for risk assets. Whether people like it or not, cryptocurrencies really are trading like a risk asset, and that is something that is likely not going to change anytime soon. A lot of people like to say that cryptocurrencies are a completely different sector and therefore trade completely differently than traditional equities. Well guys, the fact of the matter is they're actually very related, so unless the S&P 500 can break through this, then this might be an issue for cryptocurrencies as well as the equity market. Now guys, we are seeing other changes on the macro as well. It looks like the Federal Reserve could be ready to pivot, which would be very good for equities and thus good for cryptocurrencies. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens here. Now, when it comes to trading this market, guys, if you are a trader, this is where you would probably want to sell. Typically, what you're supposed to do when you're trading is you're supposed to buy on support and sell on resistance. Well, guys, we're at resistance right here. So what a trader would do is they would let this chart pop up through here. They would have likely already sold. And once it comes back down to retest this, that is when they would buy. With that said, though, guys, personally, I'm not a trader at all. It's really not how I look at markets. And the main reason for that is that's just not why I'm invested in cryptocurrency. I'm invested in cryptocurrencies for use case. I'm invested in cryptocurrencies for mass adoption. Guys, at the end of the day, you could have been buying and selling Google stock for the last 20 years. You were better off just holding it. You would have saved yourself a lot of time, a lot of tax work, and most importantly, you're never going to trade it perfectly. 
It's so much easier just to find a great asset, buy it and hold it, and let it sit there and increase in price as it gains mass adoption. Now guys, with that said, if you are a trader and you do want to do that, this is just something to consider. Now, I wanted to point this out because I think this really just goes to the point of mass adoption, and I think it really shows why I am so skeptical to trade things like cryptocurrencies or really trade any asset that I have long-term conviction in. Take a look at this. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink just said on CNBC, he looks forward to crypto and the day that all stocks and bonds are tokenized. Guys, BlackRock is one of the largest money managers in the entire world, and their CEO is directly telling you that he is looking forward to tokenizing all of BlackRock's assets. Guys, BlackRock has trillions and trillions of dollars in value that will all be put on public blockchains. Guys, this is going to cause so much money to flow into cryptocurrencies and explode the price of our favorite assets. This is an event that you just don't want to be trading around. Guys, BlackRock is not going to put all their money in crypto at one given time. It's going to be gradual and it's going to flow back in. But guys, all of that money flowing into crypto, that is going to create so much positive price momentum. For me, it's not worth trading and missing this event. Eventually, I know that institutions are going to come into this asset class. I know that pretty soon the entire stock market, bond market, and markets all over the world are going to be tokenized. Guys, I want to be in crypto for that entire thing. I don't want to catch myself trying to trade in and out of it and miss something happening like this because at the end of the day, this is the utility. This is the use case we are all waiting for. And guys, it's so important to understand how big this market could truly get. Guys, a lot of people look at something like Tether and say that thing is a scam. It's not being used for anything important. But guys, I agree. Tether probably is to some degree a scam. But the craziest thing about it is, guys, how important Tether still is, despite the fact there's so much controversy surrounding them. Take a look at this. In 2022, MasterCard did $7 trillion in settlement. In 2022, Visa did $14.1 trillion in settlement. In 2022, Tether did $18.2 trillion in settlements. Guys, it is so important to understand that cryptocurrencies are fundamentally changing the system and it's going to cause value to move so much faster and so much more efficiently that it's going to blow these traditional systems out of the water. Tether likely has a lot of issues with it and who knows if Tether is even going to be around in 15 years from now. But guys, the fact that Tether is already blowing MasterCard and Visa out of the water, guys, I think that should really show you where this market is headed. Just wait until we have real dollar peg systems that actually have transparency, actually have reliable people behind them, because guys, we are going to see settlement numbers in the hundreds of trillions. This is really the market Ripple is looking to disrupt. And guys, Ripple is a good actor. I really do think one day Visa and MasterCard, guys, they're not even going to be compared to something like XRP and Ripple because Visa and MasterCard are going to be forced to use Ripple's payment rails. At the end of the day, Visa and MasterCard just can't do the same things that cryptocurrencies can. And I think that is shown perfectly by the fact that a sketchy company like Tether is able to outdo them in settlement volume. Guys, just wait until we have regulations. We have real players in this market because, guys, we are going to absolutely see utility explode. And, guys, I hope this helps you understand why I'm not willing to trade this market, guys. I would rather just accumulate at low prices and hold for the long term. These are the kind of things I see that make me so positive in the fundamentals that it's just not worth me trading in and out of things. Guys, I'm really here for the long term. I'm looking to buy and hold these things. Look back at my portfolio in 10 to 15 years and be happy with that decision. So guys, I guess we'll see how that works out. I guess you could always make a case for why you should have traded this, why you should have sold this pump bought back at the bottom. But guys, for me, that's really not my MO. And I'm curious what you guys think. Do you guys prefer to just hold your crypto assets for the long term and wait for mass adoption? Or do you prefer to trade them back and forth and try to capitalize on the volatility? Because I want to finish this video off and show you a video of Stuart Alderati talking about what he sees for Ripple and cryptocurrencies in 2023. Guys, Stuart Alderati is one of those people where when he talks, you listen. So listen up closely to this clip and then we'll quickly break it down. Asking a lawyer to answer anything in a minute is hard. It usually takes 30 seconds just to say on the one hand and 30 seconds to say on the other hand. But let's give it a shot. Hi, this is Stu Alderati and this is Crypto in a Minute. 
So crypto regulation is healthy because, um, well, actually, first, there's a misconception that actors in the crypto space do not want regulation. And I think responsible actors in the crypto space actually do want regulation. And the reason they want regulation, it's good for their business, it's good for their customers, it's good for the markets. And the way you get there is through clear regulation. Clear regulation consistently applied leads to predictable outcomes, and predictable outcomes are good for everybody. If you don't know what the law requires, you can't comply with the law. And the law inconsistently applied leads to unpredictable outcomes, which at the end of the day is not going to be good for anybody. So I think that's the definition of healthy regulation. And I think in the crypto space, we're working our way to get there. Some markets get it right, some markets get it wrong. And I got one second left, so I'm going to stop. So guys, after listening to that, I think it's important to ask the question, how nice would it be if Stuart was in charge at the SEC? We would have common sense rules, everyone would know those rules, and we wouldn't have regulation by enforcement cracking down on good actors or just trying to get their business off the ground. Guys, Stuart Alderati, I think, nails it here. All we're looking for is clear, common sense regulations so this industry can prosper. Guys, I think Ripple is leading the way, and I think XRP is going to be the first regulated cryptocurrency with that clarity. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, pickle out.